Dude, did you know you can subscribe to OnlyWrestlers.com and keep in touch with your favorite wrestlers? The party never has to end. This week's episode of One of a Kind with RVD is presented by Get Blitzed. And you can get 15% off your order when you head to Get-Blitz.com and use promo code RVD. Get 15% off. One of a Kind with Rob Van Dam is recorded in front of a live studio audience. I had a video of that match. Honestly, I could put that match up against anything. The Stone Cold match at WrestleMania 13, you know, the, the Iron Man match, any match I ever had. You know, I would say you'd be a hard time saying that was a great match. Those kind of things, like having a... Uh, yeah, you know, I, I wrote about it in my book, but I had a Dynamite Kid in a ladder match. Mm-hmm. Calgary. Neither one of us had ever had a ladder match before. And I remember it's like, I go, it's kind of a gimmick match that you have once. It's kind of like a cage match. You only do it once in a while. You can't do them every week or anything. Right. They're just, I said, but this was, you know, I told myself it would be really suspenseful. Because every time you climb up, you almost get the money or whatever it is. And then you, you know, they, you, you keep pulling the belt or the ladder out from underneath. Yeah. Until it, you have to work around the ladder. But I know, you know, it's in my book and all that. You might have already read it. So I won't go to long rant about it. But it's like we had never had a ladder match. And, you know, when we drove up that day to the building, I don't even know if we knew that we were in a ladder match. Oh, really? And at that time, we drove up together, parked in the building and walked in. I remember we were both kind of surprised and oh yeah like we're on a fucking ladder match <laughs> and Dynamite's like what's the ladder match and I'm like it's a man I try to explain it to him it's like and he's going uh, okay I can't because I had to have told him about it a few weeks before and it was he cleared it but it was like we got to kind of refresh each other's memories on what we were going to do and I know our wives we were just they weren't really smart to, they, weren't, they weren't our wives yet they were our girlfriends yeah. our girlfriends or sisters and I remember they we had we pretended we weren't really good friends all the way up, but we slowly kind of started to have conversation about certain things that it was like growing up in England. And, you know, you could tell that they were like, oh, it's nice they're talking and they're friends. And stuff like that. You know, it was more of a put on, but we you know, right. were trying to, because they weren't, we didn't know how long we'd be going out with them. So we were like trying to do, protect the business as we were back in those days. Yeah. But I just remember, you know, they didn't expect anything. And all of a sudden, I remember that night, they both up in the stands watching, and um, of all the matches I've ever had, I don't think I ever had a match that compared to that one. It was the most gory, bloodthirsty, violent wrestling match I've ever had in my life, and Amazing. it was so extreme and so real. I'm sure anyone watching it would go, don't tell me that match was not totally, completely real. It was so intense. I remember he dynamite ran me into the wall and there was blood everywhere and I was um he was I run him into the wall and he was bleeding and I went to bang his head on a chair mm-hmm. and he hit the chair so hard with his hands with his forehead, like he had his hands up by his forehead. Mm-hmm. But he really hit the chair and I really slammed his head into the chair and he bounced back and his hair snapped his head back. And it completely shattered my nose. He just oh. broke my nose right in half, like just right in the middle of my nose. It was like someone picking up a rock about as big as a medicine ball and just hit me right in the face. Oh my god! And it was I, I kept the back of dynamite's head open with my nose. Oh man! And he was he, and he was bleeding, and my and my nose I could stick my baby finger right down by the middle of my nostril. <laughs> um, when I got to the dressing room, it was like it looked like somebody hit me with a truck. I mean, I looked, I, I looked down, I said, how bad is it? And he was dying, I almost got gagged. He goes, oh, it's fucking bad. Oh, jeez. You know, and I was like, and I was like, okay, so how do you do about it? My nose is on the left side of my face now. I didn't know, and I just never heard. I was pretty numb from it. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there's, there's the, the razor cuts and all that stuff that you already got from before that happened. And it's like, it's this violent match. I remember when we climbed up the ladder. <laughs> And he, um, oh, I think I know. I remember now. I remember the finish. We were like it was like a double knockout. We were both lying there on the mat, 
and then I start to get up first. And uh, I think the, the heel manager um, jumped up on the apron, and John Foley, who was Dynamite's manager in those days, whacked me over the head with the, the cane. And I, as soon as the referee turned around, I was down, and he started kind of like a double knockout. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to remember now. I, I, mean, I know that uh, me and Dynamite were down, and Dynamite started to climb up now, and I'm like out cold from you. What John Foley did to me. Like yeah, I'm yeah. Collapsed and down. I'm not moving. And Dynamite starts to pull himself together. He starts to climb up. And um, he started to climb up the ladder. And he remember he told me, like, you explained that. I wrote all this in my book. It's like, he was like, when I start to shake the ladder, that means like it'll wobble a little bit. You know, like he was all trying to make it wiggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he goes, well, just jump up and drop kick, but don't touch the ladder. Let me tip it over myself. Because if you drop kick it, you'll tip, it'll be too strong. Mm -hmm. And and then it'll flip over, and then we are not looking good. Let me tip it gently myself. And he leaned into the ladder, and I barely jumped up, and I barely touched the the ladder with with the, the toe of my boot. Mm -hmm. And then he tipped that whole ladder from one side of the ring all the way to the other. And then he crotched himself on the top rope and bounced out and landed right on top of John Foley. <laughs> and I remember the place went absolutely crazy. And I remember climbing up the ladder and pulling the money down. And I remember I got a picture of it in my book. Oh man. But it was like, I remember looking around at the building and it's like every, there was people with their squinched and they were like frothing at the mouth. They were, it was like such a real fight. Yeah. And I remember, and I remember going, I remember Adrian Street was a British wrestler that was here at the time that saw that match. He came up to me after he goes, that's the greatest match I've ever seen in my life. No shit. Adrian Street said that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and he said it to me years later, he goes, he goes, that match still the best match I ever watched. Wow. That was way into my career. And I would say, you know, like in my career, and how I maybe blossomed as a wrestler in WWF, Right. that, that it was all because of both those guys. They, they, I learned so much working against Dynamite and taking some of his better ideas and making them work and sort of psychology that he had. He, English wrestlers have a lot of theatrical sort of taking in their matches. Yeah. Which was always really different. I mean, like they always had a lot of routines and like where you flip and do this roll and you roll into this and then that happens and it's all here and then it's uh, it looks so choreographed sometimes. But it, sometimes it was always like, wow, that's, if you just did that move out of the blue in a match, we get a good, it's the time then you learn, like you would learn when to do a move like that. You can't do a whole match. Like you just turn it to Dean Malenko, right? Yeah, you know, you, you know, so you want to do one of those kind of moves once in a while, and then you learn to to measure what what's a good idea, what's you know. And I learned so much from the Leo uh, and Dynamite 